And I feel like it's so hard to explain if you've never experienced this before. You're just caught in this spew of being a victim so heavily that you cannot see it any other way. Like, that is so ridiculous. These people are grown people, grown adults, and they still, they want to be oppressed so bad. And don't get me wrong, if you're oppressed, you're oppressed. But this is something different. This person is obviously not oppressed, but they would love it if they were. So they're going to reach as much as they can. I got this comment on one of my posts and it reads, I just went to a hybrid job after eight years remote and the diet culture and weight loss talk is horrible. I eat in my car now. I've got to say that's so you're not ready for society if you go into a break room or you're just in the work environment and people are saying things that offend you they may not even be saying them to you directly they're just saying them and we have to walk on eggshells because the very thought of weight loss is somehow like so incredibly hazardous to you that you have to remove yourself from the environment in general because you can't handle it you're not an adult that is a not adult thing to do being an adult should mean that you have the ability to hear things and go, eh, all right, it is what it is, right? It is what it is, right? I don't know how you people can sit there and think this is appropriate in any way. You're a grown person working in an environment. You should have the ability to just shrug the stuff like that off. You're not, <laughs> stop. I don't want to have to walk around eggshells because somebody comes into the room because I don't know if you do or do not find what I'm saying offensive. It's not realistic. And stop making it seem like it's up to me or it's my fault because you can't take criticism. I'm very wondering how this person is going to reconcile this information. Because honestly speaking, if you were a real person here and you were somebody that was like actually trying to advocate for fat acceptance, advocate for fat people to be accepted in society, then you would say, okay. I hear what you're saying. You're removing yourself from this environment, but wouldn't it be better to, to confront the problem, stay in the environment that you think is so bad, and then adapt, overcome, understand? It's not always that everybody's going to be on your side, and even on this particular point, it may not even be optimal for to have somebody on your side since you literally believe that diet culture is like demonizing fat people or just bad in general, when in reality, it's incredibly helpful to be at a thinner body, wet, body body fat percentage. So I am very interested in hearing what this person has to say. I eat in my car now. I've got to say that's so heartbreaking, so alienating and not inclusive. That the What are we like celebrating people being children now? Dude, get over it. What are you talking about? Face your fucking fears. You're a grown person. You should not be cowering in fear because somebody said, did you know that I lost like 50 pounds last year? You shouldn't take that and go, oh my God. Oh my God, I'm cowering in fear. Let me just run to my car and eat my disgusting 19 burritos in my Prius, probably Prius, let's be honest here. You are a grown person. Have the ability to take information and go, it's okay, it's all right, I'm a grown person, I can take this. Instead, this person's going, oh, I feel for you, I can't believe it's this hard. Dude, what are you talking about? What? Why would you ever consider this to be like a bad thing? Get, get the fuck over it. This person feels like the safe space for them to have their lunch is in their car. I get it. Like you want everybody to feel safe and you want everybody to feel like accommodated and things such and so forth. But sometimes we go too far and we try to justify people justifies justified people's existences in places that are obviously like ridiculous dude like if somebody was getting bullied because their butt cheeks were but you know big and juicy and things like that and somebody's like damn she got a big ass obviously then you should you should handle that i agree with this right but if you're talking about a situation where somebody goes into a break room or they're just in a workplace environment and two coworkers are having a conversation about their weight loss and you think that somehow that's equivalent to somebody being sexually harassed or you think that's equivalent to somebody swearing or saying very mean things to you directly, you have a mental problem. That is a mental issue. There, I don't. If you have an issue with that, I struggle to believe that you even have the ability to be in public in general because this particular problem is so incredibly far-fetched that the idea of it baffles my mind that you would find uh, – you would run to your car because you can't handle somebody talking about weight loss. You have an issue, an actual issue, and this person sitting here making it seem like this is an actual problem, dumb.
dumb, stupid, doesn't make sense. It was like the safe space for them to have their lunch is in their car and not in the office. And unfortunately, this is so common. I've heard this story, similar stories. So, so shouldn't we be advocating for people to have thicker skin and not, and not like take criticism like this to the to heart even though it's not actual criticism for them like can you imagine if i was saying something in the break room and i was like dude last night dude i was sucking some ridiculous bbc it was crazy it was 19 inches and somebody else got upset because when they sucked bbc it was only 14 inches so in this scenario they feel bad because they weren't able to take the the quantity and quality of BBC in their mouth. Should I feel bad for them? Should I just not talk about what I want to talk about because it may or may not offend them? How far does this go? How far does it go? Because like, for instance, I like to talk about Star Wars. What if my opinion on Star Wars offends somebody else and you go to HR and you go, uh, I was just in the break room and David was just talking about how he thinks that Ewan McGregor is like a really cool person. He thinks he's really attractive. And I, I actually really disagree with that. I actually think that Hayden Christensen is way more attractive, and I think he's more of a delectable individual. So I thought that was really uncomfortable for me. I had to go eat in, in, the, in the car. I just didn't really find, like, it was a very accommodating space. Is that how far we're going to take it? Like, at the, at the point where we're at right now, we can't even have conversations anymore. Do you want people to just consistently walk on, walk on eggshells? Like, what do you even talk about anymore when you're in the break room if you can't talk about these particular types of things? What? Because anything is going to be offensive. And if we're stretching the, the extent of offensiveness to I lost weight now I feel better and this person hears that and they have to eject themselves from this particular environment and eat in the car that's not cool many 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 times that the workplace is just not safe for people living in bigger bodies dude get the fuck over it bro are you serious there are literally people like working on skyscrapers there are people <laughs> blowing their backs out putting down brick working in the sewers and you're talking about some, it's not a safe work environment? What are you talking about right now? How disconnected from, like, normality are you? Well, who are you, first of all, if you're considering this to be offensive? So normalized to talk about bodies, to talk about diet, to talk about how we're not uh, okay with our bodies and we want to make them smaller. Yeah, no shit, because that's how people talk to each other. Did you know that? I'm sorry to say that. Did you not know that people have concerns with themselves or maybe with other people? And sometimes when you get into conversations, you get into conversations about, hey, did I tell you about that time I lost weight? Or, hey, did I tell you about that time I went to the gym? You can't talk about this stuff anymore? Like, is there a, should there be a policy listed at the front door? No gym talk, no diet talk, no this talk, no this talk? Fuck you. I'm going to talk about what I want, dude. You're not going to tell me what I can and cannot do. That's fucked up. If I'm not, like, if I'm not, like, directly telling you that you're, an, you're, you're a disgusting, bagel-eating iguana face, then you shouldn't have an issue, okay? Especially if I'm talking about something that has something to do with me. If I'm saying, like, hey, I lost weight, now I feel good. You, if you feel bad about that, then that should tell you something about yourself rather than something about me. You shouldn't get punished for that. What do you, ah, uh, grow up, grow up. All of this in front of people who have bigger bodies. Not acceptable. And it what are you fucking talking about? What are you, it's like, if this was the case, right? Could you just not talk about like, just, <laughs> could you not talk about the luxury of sucking dick uh, unless you're around all gay people? What if, like, hear me out. If we can't talk about weight, if we can't talk about exercise because there may or may not be a fat person around, that means fundamentally you can't talk about anything that may or may not be offending to a whole bunch of other people. Like, for instance, I know a person that's black and they always tell me whenever they go in the break room, they always look at that person and she calls it black woman eggshells because they have to fundamentally change up everything they're talking about because they may or may not offend that particular person, right? Because they've been through all this training and shit like that. And almost anything nowadays could or could not be offensive to a particular demographic of person. So obviously when this person comes in, it's, it's always like, oh um, yeah, let's change the subject because that subject may or may not be about a black person or something like that. And that's really tough because do you want to have to change up everything that you're talking about and then come into a room and see that people are changing up because you came in over something that you have no ability to change? It's even worse in this scenario because you're fat 
And this is actually a problem. Being a black lady is not exactly a problem. I mean, it may be for some demographics of people, but for most people, it's not an issue, right? So when I hear this information being disposed, it always comes off incredibly cringy, disingenuous, makes no sense. Get the fuck over it. You're a grown person. It doesn't make the workplace inclusive or safe. Hey, I'm Vinny, AKA Fierce Fatty, and I help people unlearn anti-fat bias by facilitating diversity training organizations who want to add size inclusion to their DEI efforts. If you want to make your workplace safe for people in bigger bodies, then consider adding fat liberation to the company's DEI if effort. If you do that, I guarantee you that work environment's gonna be way less productive. I guarantee it. If everybody has to focus on the fat, oh, there's here comes Cheryl, here comes, shh, be quiet, don't talk about anything because Cheryl might find it offensive. Don't talk about anything. That's and if that's something you'd like to learn more about, then go to weightbiastraining.com. Terrible. I went to the doctor with my girlfriend yesterday and it really hit home how differently smaller bodies are perceived by the medical profession. You know, I think it's interesting when these people say these words like perceived by medical professionals. You do understand that your body being obese is going to be fundamentally looked at differently compared to somebody's body that is not obese. Did you know that? Did you know that you're in a different category compared to somebody that's not obese? Did you not know that? Because here's the thing. When you're obese, odds are you're going to be suffering from the effects of being obese. Because being obese is already a negative debuff on your, your person's health, okay? Like if there was, if we were playing a game and there was like a health bar, like a green health bar above your head, it would be yellow, okay? And it'd be ticking down. It'd be like negative 0.01. Like every, every other second, it'd be like tick, tick, tick right above your head because your health is being permanently debuffed. And sure, you can always take a med kit or drink a slurp shield or something like that to increase your health for a little bit of time, but it's always a passive debuff of your health being permanently ticked down. So when a thin person goes in for some type of, uh, some type of procedure or ailment or things such and so forth in a doctor's office, naturally the doctor is going to treat them for an illness. Whereas when you come in, the illness actually might be contributed to you being obese or at the very bare minimum, if it's not contributed to you being obese, why the fuck would you expect the doctor to not address the issue, which is you being fat? Like if you're going in for a sprained ankle and the doctor goes, okay, yeah, let's get this sprained ankle looked at. We're going to get it fixed up. No problem. But something I got to talk to you about you are very obese and this is going to negatively affect you like tremendously you would contribute that to being like negative or fat phobic that's craziness that is absolutely craziness this is something obviously that we know in theory but since i have never been a small person terrible it's not something that i've experienced myself why have you never been a small person though can you not like lose weight at all is it impossible for you i hear these people complaining about it consistently but yet do nothing nothing at all to ever alleviate the problems that they face in their everyday life all right whatever dude and i was also thinking about it and like my soon to be ex-husband was also larger um i don't think that i've ever really been to the doctor with someone who is noticeably closer <laughs> to the beauty standard than me she went to an orthopedic doctor because she's been having some issues with her knee and it was so <laughs> I, already, I already see where this is going there i can't believe when I go to the doctor as a fat person with knee problems, with joint issues, the doctor says it may have something to do with the fact that I'm carrying around double or triple the amount of weight that a normal person should be carrying around at my height. And they never do that. They never talk to the person that's like 120 pounds about the weight that they're carrying. It's just, this is fat phobic. It's just gross, systemic fat phobia these doctors are never gonna tell me that it's not it has nothing to do with my weight but it, they they always talk to me about it i obvious fucking lee if you weigh more than the person that doesn't weigh more you're gonna be the one that gets talked to about it that doesn't even make sense what are you talking about that's like somebody going into a doctor's office without legs and you go how come you talk to me about my legs but you don't talk to them about their legs oh they don't have legs well guess what that's leg phobia, ableism, ableism. That's what it sounds like. That's dumb. That's stupid. Because she's been having some issues with her knee. And it was so interesting to me yeah. 
to like see her be treated as a person yeah but also have them be like oh yeah we know like you do a lot of physical things which yeah. she does like that's accurate <laughs> um but it- i also want to point out that the issues that you're having with your knee are probably never going to be associated with your weight, especially if you're a thinner person, because why would the weight ever have to do with anything about your knee problems if you're you're supposed to be the weight that you are, right? But if you're fatter, obviously, that's going to play a fucking role. I mean, we know the bigger you are, it's like literally thousands of pounds more pressure on these particular joints on your body, especially the lower you go down. So, of course, it's going to have something to do with your legs, or at least at the very bare minimum, it's something we're going to have to talk about. It was very much focused on like... We really want to get you back to, like, doing all of your things that you love to do, like, going on really long hikes. Um, And it was just, it's so hard to describe. (laughs) She looked at me afterwards and she was like, what's the face? Like, what's going on in your head? And I'm just like, he treated you like a person. I don't want to be, I don't want to be around you if you look at everything like this. Like, you're in the realm of oppression so deeply that you have to vic- victimize your, you have to make everything about yourself. Man, the main character syndrome that we have today is crazy. Can you imagine somebody, your significant other, going to the doctor's office for their problem? And when you leave, you have to make it about yourself so heavily and you demonize, you're like, ooh, you were treated like a person, but I've never treated like a person, even though your problems are fundamentally different compared to my problems, and my problems mainly have to do with my weight, but it seems like your problems never have to do with your weight. I can't believe this fat phobia. You're dumb. You're dumb. That's dumb. That's stupid. That doesn't make Going sense. Going on in your head, and I'm just like, he treated you like a person, and too. he focused on the issue, <laughs> and the issue alone And then was like, yep, we're trying to do our best to, like, get you back to where you were. If you're fat, okay, and you have – okay, if you weigh hundreds more pounds than you should actually weigh, which this person may not seem like they do, they have a lot of weight in their lower body, and you can't see it here. But I've seen videos of them walking through Target. It's crazy. Okay? When you have, like, hundreds of pounds on your body at any given point in time that are – that's more than what you need, your joints – Okay, they have to rub against each other. There's usually a layer between them, right? But like you do understand that the more you weigh, the more the joints have to compress upon themselves, right? And sure, your body will be able to handle that for a period of time. But gradually, over time, and especially the fatter you are, it becomes exponentially more serious that the joint in between, the lubrication in between the joint, the bones, will become gradually deteriorated over time. So... When you go in for a problem to do with your knee or joint or something else and you're obese, naturally a doctor or a medical professional is going to look at that and go, this probably has a lot to do with the fact that you're obese and you have a lot of problems. But at the very bare minimum, it's most definitely not helping you. Like it's most definitely expediting the pains or it's most definitely expediting the the all the problems that you're having with this particular pro- with this joint, right? Whereas where somebody's thinner, they're not going to have that same problem because they're already thin. You understand? Why the fuck would they get treated for obesity when they're not obese? So obviously, naturally, if a person is thinner, they're not going to be treated for that stuff. And they're going to be focusing on the actual issue. You understand? Do you understand? You're in a different category. You cannot compare yourself to somebody that's thinner because you think they're treated like a a different person. They are a different person. You're obese. You're going to have different problems compared to a thin person. The doctor is not fat phobic. He's just being a realist. And I just, even though in recent years, I've had a lot better experiences with doctors because I can weed out the ones that are really like weight focused. You're terrible, dude. Can you imagine going to a doctor and a doctor tells you like, eh, you know, this might be an issue for you, the weight. And you go, this is it. Like, this is the last appointment. And you go, you hop to doctor to doctor to doctor. And eventually you find one that yes queens you and goes, yes, queen. Yes, this is totally fine. You're totally okay. You're never going to get anything solved, by the way, if you do that. You do know that, right? You're just going to a particular person that's just going to tell you yes to everything. Do you really want that? Or do you want the problem to be solved? And this is one of the reasons why I feel like these people are caught. They're caught. They're stuck in their bodies perpetually because they have so many people around them that are just vacuuming, that are just echoing off of everything that they say. You say, oh, I'm fat and I'm beautiful. The doctor goes, yes, queen, period, slay edges. Is that what you want? Is that what you fucking want? You never get your problem solved. You're always going to deal with this. It's still like 
Oh, it was so different. <laughs> oh, shit. What the fuck are you talking about? That's like somebody driving a Prius into the body shop, right? And then a guy, and you go, oh my god, my car is being treated in this particular type of way. It's got to get fixed in this particular type of way. And then a fucking Optimus Prime 18-wheeler comes in. And you're going, wow, this car is being treated so much differently compared to my... Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Two different fucking automobiles. You understand? And I feel like it's so hard to explain if you've never experienced this before. You're just caught in this spew of being a victim so heavily that you cannot see it any other way. Like, that is so ridiculous. These people are grown people, grown adults, and they still, they want to be oppressed so bad. And don't get me wrong, if you're oppressed, you're oppressed. But this is something different. This person is obviously not oppressed, but they would love it if they were. So they're going to reach as much as they can. The two topics that get me metaphorically or quite literally laughed out of room when I bring them up in relatively progressive spaces, either in person or online, is ableism and fat phobia. And this is I think that's hilarious though, because usually the people that are the most progressives are the people that are going to be focusing more on social issues, on how we act in society, or maybe they're even focusing on systemic problems and things such and so forth. And even in these circles where people are focusing on minorities and people such and so forth, it's still is not seen as an actual problem because most of the time when fat people are fat, and I, when I say most of the time, I got to preference this with 99.9% .9 of times when you're fat, it's your fault. And guess what? The only person that can get you out of a position to be fat is yourself. So I don't doubt that when you're in a progressive circle or people that are incredibly on the left, that these people are still not looking at you as like, a, a, a person a part of them because that issue is so incredibly outside the realm of realisticness that why would they ever do it? it doesn't it doesn't make sense in any way so of course i mean but that should really tell you something like even in your circles it doesn't make sense this isn't me saying other marginalized groups have it better in these spaces but i find when it comes to ableism and fat phobia their apathy towards these groups goes unmasked like they don't even try to hide it and i feel like this stems from archaic beliefs that these marginalized groups aren't actually oppressed because they most of the time they're not and if you're talking about oppression it's probably the oppression of gravity by the sheer magnitude of the weight that you're holding on on your body and when you say oppressed like are we talking about something if you're talking about like for instance oppression in the sense of like black people being pulled over at a higher rate or maybe systemic issues that stem from like redlining and other things like that from way back in the gym jim crow errors and things like that sure i will concrete i will agree that is oppression um and things such and so forth but if you're going to sit there and say that that is equivalent to a fat person not being able to walk upstairs, do you see how crazy of a comparison that is? Do you see how crazy it is for somebody to go, I'm fat, I have to buy two airplane seats, and that's not fair because everybody else has a comfortable time sitting on a plane, but I'm so fat that it's literally impossible for me to sit on one seat, so I have to buy two tickets, and somehow that's equivalent? That's somehow equivalent? Really? That's an interesting idea. That is a really interesting idea, matter of fact. I can't even believe that you would find that comparison. But, you know, go off, queen. Go ahead. They can just work on themselves. To True, you can work on yourselves. You can't work on yourself to not being black. Well, maybe you could, depending on where you are. I saw some people over there in, like, I think it was Korea or Japan, Japan where they were like, oh, they were like, if you're too dark of an Asian... Then, or maybe it wasn't, I don't know if they, I don't know exactly what country it was, but there was like there's some kind of magical serum that you can rub upon yourself and it would lighten you, you know, like I, I, it was in India too. Like if you're a dark Indian guy, you can get a particular serum to make you a little bit lighter because in certain countries, I guess it's more preferable to be a lighter skin of dark than it is to be a darker skin of dark, which I don't really understand personally. I know a lot of deep black guy friends and I've been with predominantly darker skinned women for my entire life so personally speaking me being a snow bunny and expertise on this particular matter darker is good too i mean i'm not like shitting on lighter skinned people or whatever i know that there's a lot of colorism in the black community though the amount of times i've heard well yeah i've heard it from both ends i've heard black guys say yeah dog nah i would never date a black bitch black bitches are terrible dog they always try to tell me what to do and shit and they always want to be like yo clean up your mess or whatever and yeah th th there is most definitely um black women have a bad reputation here in america and also light-skinned dudes have a very bad reputation and light-skinned women are like super fetishized in our society because you get the best of both worlds but that's actually not how that works i don't know who the fuck said that 
Um, and then also, it's really, really weird on how we even classify different races in, in here in America. Like, if you look white, then you're white. But you are actually black because even though you look white, you have the disadvantage of looking white while being black. So if you ever say something like the N-word or something like that, you'll probably be shunned for it even though your dad is black or something like that. I've seen that actually quite a few times. Or they'll think that you're not black enough to say it at all, which I've even heard that scenario, which is crazy. I don't even know how that works. And I see it on the other side, which is like I've heard women literally say um, that you can't date light-skinned dudes because they're fuck boys or they're pussies because the lighter skin of them makes them more, um, I don't know, lick their lips or something like that. I don't know personally. And I always thought, if these dudes are pussies because they have lighter skins, does that mean that I'm like a super pussy? Because I'm white. You know, I have like almost zero melanin. So what does that mean for me? Am I just like really, really pussy? I don't think so, personally. I don't know. Anyway, I like to consider myself a super light skin. Become either non-disabled or thin. I also find it really ironic when progressives from my generation uphold these bigoted beliefs. But will call out older generations or be appalled at the oppressive language that was once normalized in society. When we do the same thing. And because ableist and fatphobic language is normalized and embedded into our everyday speech. People get defensive when members of these oppressed groups rightfully call them out. In progressive spaces, people may be more aware of the R slur, but will still say things that target an individual's mental capacity. I have both mental and physical disabilities and the amount of people who've called me slow is ridiculous. And people hate when I say this but calling someone dumb or stupid which are words we may not even think twice about because of how embedded they are in our lexicon but they are words that have been historically weaponized. Against Every word has been historically weaponized dude and I get it nobody sh I get that you don't want to be called slow stupid or anything else I get it but what the fuck do you want from me, dude? Like, what are we supposed to do? Like, go out in the street? Somebody, somebody says, "Hey, I wanna, I wanna suck the dick of the last guy that fucked you. Your ass is real fat. That shit is ridiculous. Damn, she thicker than a bowl of oatmeal." Like, what are we supposed to say to those people? Like, excuse me, sir. Um, what you just said was like really, really insensitive. And maybe it would be like really better for you if you didn't say those things. Do you think that most people would be receptive to that? No. Uh, no. And you could maybe do something like that in, like, the workplace, sure, because it's a professional environment. But that's really it, dude, because, like, if I'm out in public or even at my own house and I'm playing an online game and somebody does something dumb and I'm going to go, dude, that was stupid. You're dumb. Or I'm having an argument with you. Yeah, what the fuck you want from me, dude? Fuck off me. You're dumb. You're dumb. You're dumb. What are you going to do now, huh? What are you going to do? <laughs> Can't do anything. And you're fat. And you're fat. Bleg. Bleg. You got more front. Then you do back. That's an issue, okay? I don't know why these people find such offense. Like, we're not changing words, okay? I know for a long time we tried to. Remember when there was that whole big thing and they were, like, trying to change the word bossy because it had a negative annotation on women? Because they said that if bossy means good, bossy is good for men, but bossy for women is bad. So they try to have, like, a whole campaign to not use the word anymore, which was fucking ridiculous. I don't know who the fuck decided to do that. But... It's dumb. Nobody's changing the way they speak, and I get it. Like, you think that it's not okay here, but honestly speaking, I think it's either all okay or it's not okay all completely. ...of how embedded they are in our lexicon, but they are words that have been historically weaponized against disabled people, and I'm not perfect. I also catch myself. And when it comes to fat phobia, someone in more progressive circles may be aware that saying fat derogatorily is frowned upon, but will spout diet culture or openly call someone big back. And when I and damn big back is crazy as fuck, dude. Big backed. Found upon, but will spout diet culture or openly call someone big backed. And when I and many others have these conversations, it's met with eye rolls and scoffs. Yeah, because it's a ridiculous ass conversation, dude. If I'm telling you that being fat is not a good thing, or I'm making a joke around people that are fat about people being fat, and you think that telling me it's like being a vegan and then telling somebody while they're eating meat that it's bad. You understand? Or like telling somebody that's smoking a cigarette that it's bad. You don't think I know that it's bad, dude? I know it's bad. But guess what? Fuck you, okay? I mean, maybe the, the cigarette comparison is not as good. Because the meat comparison, it's not even really that bad. Compa de depending on what you're doing to the meat. Right? If you're well seasoning the meat or whatever the fuck. And I'm not talking about penis. I'm talking about actual protein here. Chicken, steak, things such and so forth. Not penis. But... It's such a crazy concept to most people when you say like, hey, you just said something really insensitive about fat people. Most people are going to look at you like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? She was literally on the floor gasping for air because she was so fat. And you go, yeah, but 
you know, that was like really intense. I dude. You can't be saying that. Like, fuck you, dude. I'm gonna say what I want. Okay. Get the fuck off me. Is nothing. If you want to say what you want to say, say what you want to say. Don't make the, don't let these people dictate how you say these words. Okay. I presumed that when I became small, all of this super cool stuff was going to happen in my life. And then some of it, now I look back and I'm like, that is so funny. Like, why, why would, did you think that? And other things I'm like, oh, Victoria, oh, I understand. I, I feel for you. And what fun um, things did you think it was going to happen? Like, do you think you would start floating because the weight was like pushing down on you for so long? And then when finally, when you let go of the weight, you would like hover or like lift up off the ground. No, that's, I mean, obviously, but if you've never like really walked before in a long spurt of time, that's probably really great. Like I knew a lot of people, I knew a dude personally that lost a lot of weight and he was so happy to show me that he could literally get himself off the floor. And that was like, to me, no problem. Like I can get myself off the floor, no problem. But for him, he had never in his entire life, and he was like 25 at the time, 26, he had never in his entire life ever been able to remove himself off the floor. He always needed assistance or he needed to like grab onto something and like really struggle. He could do, he could get off a flat surface with just himself. Now that is a beautiful thing. For me, it's not because I'm just, it's normal to me. And he was also very, very happy that he was able to hang. Like he grabbed onto bars and he just hung there for like 10 seconds. He was so happy about that. And for me, again, not a big deal. But for people that have never been able to do that and have the ability to do that and all they need to do is lose weight, it is such a dub. It is such an amazing achievement. And I think that when these people say like, oh, I thought I was going to get something that I didn't get, what did you think you were going to get? Like floating, dude? Did you think you were going to fly? Please, enlighten us. Um, and it's not my fault that I believed in this magical thinking because it is your fault that's a literal f well i guess it depends if you were indoctrinated then maybe because diets diet companies and society uh, uh, as a whole um hates fat bodies and can you tell us what you thought you were gonna what, what was gonna happen to you like did you think that when you lost weight were you gonna be able to like lift excalibur out of the fucking ground or something what, what are you talking about when you say like i thought magical things was gonna happen what magical things makes it seem like having a thinner body or smaller body is going to get you these super cool things so like walking like jumping like being able to not be out of breath when you walk a few steps or get out of bed in a timely manner or <laughs> tie your shoes or take appropriate bowel movements and wash yourself appropriately these are all things apparently that the diet industry i guess tells you that's gonna happen and doesn't happen i guess i didn't know that no, whatever I mean, a thinner body or smaller body is going to get you these super cool things so I'm going to list them out for you. Okay, here we go. And I'm curious if any of these um, resonate with you, if you've had these same feelings. Um, so the first thing was around men. Like, I thought, you know, Brad Pitt was going to suddenly contact me and find my email address and be like, baby, I've been waiting all this time for you to lose weight and now I'm in love with you. Um, obviously not actually Brad Pitt, but men basically would be like, oh my God, fall at my feet. Um, it'd be like a movie scene, you know, like I'd be walking down the street and men would be so distracted by my thinness that they'd walk into a lamp post and. You have unrealistic, that's just unrealistic. It has nothing to do with being thin. That just means that you had an unrealistic idea of how attractive that you were, personally. I mean, when you look like Joe Swanson, obviously, it don't matter what, how much weight you lose, it's going to be negatively affecting you, right? But here's the thing. Are you telling me when you did lose weight, you, you, you got no type of extra male attention? Like, obviously, if you're looking for it and you think that men are, you, you want men to approach you and things like that, which is fine, by the way. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If you're a woman and you want guys to approach you... Or I knew some girls that literally told me like they want to be catcalled. And I understand that. I get it. In the same way that, for instance, I know some guys that go, oh, man, I really hate shopping with my girlfriend. It's terrible because all she wants to do is look at stuff. And I just want to wait in the car. I just want to play like, I don't know. I just want to play Angry Birds or Tetris on my phone for 45 to an hour while she's in the Walmart looking at things. And then she eventually comes out with like two carts full of stuff. I hate it. Right. And I get it. I don't like shopping with women either. A lot of the time. But there's a novelty to it when you have never done it or you haven't done it in a long time. I know guys, I don't know them, but I know these guys exist where there will be guys perfectly 
um that could get relationships that have the ability to but they just don't have the time to that will hit up women and go let me take you shopping because they they want the feeling of taking a woman shopping to buy her what she wants and i get it i understand it you know in the same way that maybe a woman wants to be catcalled like there's a novelty to it if you've never had it before maybe you want it you know what i'm talking about i mean i'm not this is not a case for you to be gay if you want to be gay then fine but don't take what i'm saying as like a you know because some gay dudes will say that to you sometimes they'll go hey how do you know you don't love dick in your mouth if you never had dick in your mouth i got dick right here you could probably just put this shit right now in your mouth and maybe you love that shit um, I'm not gay, so I'm not going to be suckling, succotashing on men meat because I've never had it in my lips before. I know that some things are fundamental for me personally, but the point I'm making is for some people, um, there is a novelty to it. And I think it's quite a, I would love to actually talk to this person firsthand because, uh, how much weight, first of all, did you lose? And then secondly, you've gotten, you got no extra male attention. Like when you lost the weight, did you just spend all your time inside? I uh, from no apps, right? You didn't get any actual messages from men or anything like that. I find that very hard to believe, given the fact that some men will literally have sex with cheesecakes, and you are obviously far and away above a cheesecake. So I, I mean, uh, maybe this is her own personal thing, but I think for most people, when you become more attractive, you get more attention. So distracted by my thinness that they'd walk into a lamp post, and I'd be like. <laughs> Uh, just another day, thin me, you know, just men falling over themselves. So they I know a girl that has this problem, though. It's not a good problem to have. I think it's a cool problem until it's not a cool problem. And she's, like, a very, very attractive girl. And she'll literally have guys that approach her um, that go, like, damn, um, you look real good. Can I get your number? Can I get your number? Let me take you out. Like, copious amounts of text messages and all this other stuff because she's a very pretty girl. And she hates it. She doesn't like it at all. She likes being a pretty girl. But the added... The, the added defects of being a pretty girl, I feel like a lot of people don't understand them. And, I mean, obviously, me, obviously me myself, I'm not a pretty girl because I'm missing one of those aspects. Obviously, I'll let you decide which one. And I think a lot of times people don't look at the downsides of being a very, very pretty girl. Like, there's a lot of upsides. You know, maybe you get positions. Maybe you get more attention. Maybe you, more men approach you. Maybe people in general more approach you. Sure, people are more receptive to you, but the downsides are, how do you know that you even got this job because you're good at your job? How do you know this guy actually likes you for you? How do you know that any of these any of these people actually like you for you and they're not just here because you're pretty, you know? Or the sexual harassment that happens consistently, you know? I don't know. Something to think about. You know me, obviously. <laughs> um, I thought that I would become richer like money would rain from the skies why right? though i'd get an immediate pay rise but why why would you think that isn't isn't that based off job performance i also thought that well maybe it would have because you're becoming a little bit more energy efficient right contrary to popular belief even though these people are literally holding double or triple the amount of energy that they need a day um they're actually terribly en energy efficient like they're constantly upset they're constantly tired they have no energy at all it's really weird isn't it I would become super confident now usually you do become more confident because you're you're becoming more serious you're becoming more uh, uh what's the word I'm looking for here um secure within yourself right so you have more you know what you offer you know you become more attractive so usually this is the truth I think this person is just like fucking lying right now dude I think this person has most definitely experienced all those things but they're trying to make a case that it's not true which is very weird that these would be the things that you point to well at that time when i was working working in a call center i was so shy i was i could barely talk to people on the phone i would do everything i could to not have to talk to another human being it just kind of sounds like this isn't a profession for you if i'm going to be honest here for a second that if you have a problem talking to people on the phone i don't think it has anything to do with you being fat i just think that that's not the job for you i I was just so different from what I was today. And so, yeah, but why would you think any of this stuff? Like, if you have fundamental things about you that are not attributed to you being fat, like, for instance, being shy, sure, I'm sure a little bit could be attributed to you being fat. I'm sure there are plenty of people that were very, very shy when they were fat, but then they came out of their shell when they eventually lost that weight, I'm sure. But some people are just naturally not people that like confrontation, and that's okay. Um, but you just have to understand that and separate that from whatever other aspect of your life you think is, is drawing from that. I thought that having less fat on my body would mean that my brain would change. It would, and yeah, 100%. Like, no, that's a fact, though. 
That is a fact. If you if you lose weight and you become energy efficient and you actually eat what you're supposed to eat and not double, triple portion sizes and things such and so forth, and you're working out, your hormones will improve, your body will improve, you'll feel better mentally speaking. Yeah, I mean, that's a fact. I've arrived now. I'm confident. And my life in general, I thought it would become like this, you know, magical. How much did you lose? Can you give us like some numbers here, dude? What was your starting weight and how much did you lose? You like five pounds and think that like, your life was going to change off five pounds? Running through fields of flowers. Running, and definitely. rainbows and sunshine all the time. And I would be happy. And my life would be just better. Because I had less adipose tissue on my body. Like, I thought my brain chemistry would change. It, it will. And, you know, any mental health issues that I was dealing with would just dissolve away because, you know, now I'm thin. Because, you know, thin people don't have problems, right? Wrong. They don't have... Okay, first of all, they, they don't have problems. Sure, they do. Thin people have problems all the time. But the problems that they have are not contributed to the weight. The issue oftentimes I see is, like, most thin people are suffering the same problems that everybody else is suffering because most problems that you're suffering are not unique to you, right? Like everybody's going to be having family members that they lose or um, they have to take care of somebody, they have to work, they have to take care of stuff and things such and so forth. Fat people also have to deal with those things. But the other issue is now you have to also deal with the fact that you're fat on top of those issues that you have. So a thin person having problems and a fat person having problems, they have the same problems, but they have extra on top of that, right? You understand? So why would you ever want more problems when you can not have these issues and just come down here you understand okay whatever uh i also thought that i would become healthy you're fucking lying to me dude fuck off me get the fuck off me dude you're a liar you're a fucking lyinger you're lying so many this doesn't make any sense dude you didn't become healthier huh how much weight did you lose how much did you lose, dude? Was it really like five pounds? Did you just like wait? Did you like not drink water one night and then wake up and you're like, oh my god, I lost two pounds because I'm obviously a super fat skinny legend? No, no, dude. How much did you lose? How much? How much, dude? I, I, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for it. I'd be an athlete. Like... Get the fuck out. An athlete? Why is everything that you imagine like so, like most people have an an understanding? Most okay. First of all. Most people, I know contrary to popular belief, think this, but most people are dating people around their age bracket. Most people are dating people around their money bracket. Most people are dating people that are around their attractiveness bracket. There are only a few people that can date above those things usually, right? But most people are dating people roughly around where they are. And that's okay because that's usually how it works, right? If you're in a job, you're probably going to date somebody in the job. If you're at school, probably date somebody at school. That's just how it is, right? And that's okay. If you're sitting here and you're thinking you're going to get fucking guys that look like Brad Pitt when you look like Joe Swanson, then obviously it's not going to happen, right? In the same way that why the fuck would you think you would make more money because you're thin? Why? Why would you think that at all? And first of all, what do you mean I would? I thought I was going to become an athlete? Why would you ever think that? You'd probably be better at sports 100% depending on what the sport is. But most sports are pretty aerobic in the sense of like you're going to be moving your body more. So that'd probably be helpful. But an athlete is interesting. And athlete, athletes are literally professionals that play sports. You're never going to do that unless like you have the genetics and like somehow you come up. I don't know. Mara. No, this is like unrealistic. This doesn't make any sense. I come healthy. I'd be an athlete. Like, I would love eating... That's obviously something that you already have, I mean. ...only salad. And I would have no interest in, uh, quote-unquote, unhealthy food. I'd probably... Why would you think that? What the fuck is wrong with this woman? Probably be in the Olympics. Okay. Probably. <laughs> you know, at least I'd be, you know, like some champion marathon runner... Not that I'd ever run a marathon before, but you know, that's what happens when you're a thin person. This person's dumb. That, no, there's nothing about this that even made any sense at all. Anytime this person talks, I feel like I lose brain cells because their understanding of how the world works, even though I feel like they're like mid thirties and they should have a pretty good understanding of how things are, they have no understanding. They're lacking common knowledge when it comes to the world. And it's very, it's fine when you're 21. 
it's fine when you're 21, 18 to 21, and you think that this is how the world is, you're invincible, you can get any bitch you want, whatever, and you think that way. I get it. I understand. Maybe you're toxic in relationships. You don't understand how shit fucking works. I can give you an excuse there because you're ignorant. Nobody has told you, right? But when you're in your 30s, dude, I can't forgive it. You're saying some blasphemous shit right now, some haram shit right now that doesn't make any sense. And to be honest, if somebody at 21 told me they said this shit, I'd be like, dude, hold on, man. None of that makes any fucking sense, right? I would forgive it to a certain degree, but some of this shit is unforgivable. Some of this is literally makes no sense. An athlete running uh, marathons, dude, becoming a fucking Olympic level athlete. How much did you lose? How much did you actually fucking lose, dude? I'm, I'm, no, she probably lost like five pounds. Probably lost like five pounds at most. And now she thinks that she's some kind of like, oh, I could do so much or whatever the fuck. I think that this is all a lie. I think this is an elaborate facade. She's putting on this big ass illusion to make it seem like she lost a lot of weight, but she's not going to tell you how much she lost. Obviously, got to keep it as big as possible as possible to put this illusion up to make sure you believe the lie, which is probably what this is. I mean, if she did lose weight, good for her. But ultimately, she just gained it back because she is now preaching the great word of being a fierce fatty, which... <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't make sense, but go off queen, slay queen edges, right? Whatever. Anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. All that stuff would help me grow in the algorithm. If you want to become a member of my channel, you could totally do that. I want to thank everybody that is a member. Thank you, all of you people. You are so amazing, beautiful specimens. Um, if you subscribe too, thank you so much for the subscription. You are beautiful as well. I care for you deeply. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in ravel ravioli or I guess B, it's not ra technically ravioli, but that's the one that everybody's familiar with is ravioli. So type in ravioli. Don't ask me why I have cans of uh, uh, beefaroni in my room right now. It's just what it is. OK, um, just because I do something that you don't do doesn't mean I'm weird. OK, just means that I'm unique. I'm a specimen. I'm a specimen just like you. We have different uh passions in life and mine just so happens to be keeping cans of very low quality food in my room i don't know what to tell you anyway it's sealed it's sealed dude if there was a zombie apocalypse i could eat this shit like 10 years from now you kidding me dude i'm i'm i'm, I'm thinking about the future okay i'm thinking about the fucking future right now but yeah leave ravioli down in the comment section by the way um i have to tell you about a major change this is going to affect literally everybody right now um i from this point on, from this video on, I love you. And I'm not afraid to admit it anymore. I was trying to keep it under wraps as much as I possibly could because I didn't want to scare you. I didn't want to tell you about like, because you know when you give too much, somebody like they kind of is a little bit overwhelming. But I woke up this morning and I was just like, I can't hold it back anymore. I can't hold it back. I just, I just couldn't. So I had to tell you right now, I don't care if you run away. I love you beyond belief my my feelings for you actually hurt me sometimes because i'm not able to tell you how drastic my love is it might be a little bit toxic we might fight about things because i like arguing but just know deep down i care for you deeply and i want to lubricate your eyebrows every single night i don't care if you're a man or a woman um this has nothing to do with gender all right it has everything to do with affection love and eyebrows okay that should be the next that's going to be the title of my next book affection love and eyebrows anyway guys we're going to end the video here if you want to check out my social medias it'll be linked down below in the description it's just my instagram my twitter my discord server my second channel if you want to check out any of those things feel free to do so enjoy the rest of your day guys